Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's Bite Size Talk. The speaker today is Soline Corian from the University of British Columbia in Canada, and she is going to talk about Variant Catalog. This is a Nextflow pipeline, but it's not part of NFCore yet. Uh, Variant Catalog is used for population analysis from whole genome sequencing, and specifically to identify variants and their frequencies. Since Soline is living in Canada, and due to the big time difference, we decided that it's best to record this talk. Therefore, if you have any questions, please ask them in the Slack Bite Size channel. As usual, I would like to thank Celine for her time and the Jan Zuckerberg Initiative for funding the Bite Size Talk series. But now, without further ado, I hand over to Celine. Hi, everyone. Welcome to this week NFCore Bite Size Talk. I am Solène Correar. I'm a research associate at BC Genome Sciences Center in Vancouver, Canada. And today I'm going to talk to you about the Variant Catalog Pipeline. First, I would like to acknowledge the lands on which I work, live, and play. Those are the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Selwatuth nations. First, <clears throat> what is a variant catalog or a variant library? When we talk about genomics and DNA, a variant catalog is the frequency of the variants within a population. For example, in this population of five individuals, they all get their whole genome sequenced. And at a certain position in their DNA, some individuals carry an A and some individuals carry a C. From that individual information, we can deduce the frequency of each allele in the population. In this example, the A allele has a frequency of 006 and the C allele has a frequency of 004. This is the main information that is within the variant catalog pipeline, the frequency of the variants within the population. When do we use a variant catalog? There are several ways to use it, uh, but a very good example is uh, through the NF Correa disease pipeline. <clears throat> So during the variant annotation and prioritization step of that pipeline, they use uh, NOMAD. NOMAD is the biggest variant catalog to date. And the reason they use it is because a variant that is frequent in a population is unlikely to be responsible for a rare disease. So when we are looking for the variant responsible for the rare disease um, in a kid, we can already filter out all the variants that are frequent in the population. So as I mentioned, NOMAD is the biggest variant catalog to date. It helped tons of families to get um, a diagnosis in rare diseases. But when we look at the ancestries of the individuals within NOMAD, we can see that most of um, the individuals are from European ancestry. And so this, um, and some populations are not even represented. They are not represented or underrepresented. And this lack of representation from some population is, is leading to um, an inequity in genomic care, because if the, the kids affected with a rare disease is from an ancestry that is not represented in the variant database, then it's harder to remove the variants that are frequent from this population, and so harder to give a diagnosis to this kid. This is a known issue. So several variant catalogs were generated around the world. Um, for example, Iranum with the Iranian population or Kova with the Korean population. The project I was working on is the Silent Genomes Project in Canada. It's a partnership with uh, the indigenous populations of Canada to build the indigenous background variant library. A very similar project is taking place in New Zealand with Genomics Athera, where they're working with the Maori population. And so um, when we were working on the indigenous background variant library, we needed a pipeline to process the data to get the variant frequencies. And some pipelines were existing, but they none of them were um, filling the three constraints that we had. The first one is that we wanted the pipeline to rely on open access tools that were previously benchmarked uh, because we didn't want to develop anything new a new software or a new tool, we wanted it to be comprehensive. And by that, I mean, it had to include single nucleotide variants 
but also mitochondrial variants, structural variants, short tenem repeats, and mobile element insertions. All those classes of variants are known to be potentially implicated in rare disease, so it's very important that all of them are present in a variant catalog. And finally, we wanted it to be able to work on local servers or on the cloud because different projects may have different constraints. And so we developed the variant catalog pipeline that you can see on the left here. This is just an overview, and I'm going to describe um, each part in more details. But the idea is that it takes as input FASTQ files from participants, and it output uh, VCF files, so variant calling files with information about the variants, their position, um, the allele, the frequency of this variant within the population, which is the main information we want, the frequency by sex, as well as some annotation. So the pipeline is divided in four sub workflow that can work uh, independently or all of them can be um, run in parallel or at least in the same pipeline. So the first sub workflow is the mapping sub workflow. It takes as input uh, short read paired and sequences for individuals as well as a reference genome. It has been developed so far for GRCH37 and GRCH38. The mapping tool is BWAMM, and it output one BAM file per individual. The second uh, sub workflow is the mitochondrial variant sub workflow. It is mostly based, is very much based on the work from uh, Larry Chan, all that was published in 2022. And it's so therefore very similar to the pipeline that is used by Nomad for their uh, mitochondrial variants. So it takes as input uh, the BAM files previously generated, uh, the variant color for um, the, the mitochondrial variants is GATK mutec2. And the reason why there is sort of a parallel section here is uh, because the mitochondrial DNA is circular. So when the to, to be able to map the mitochondrial reads against this reference genome, it is uh, linearized with a fake breakpoint around zero here. So the maps that are supposed to um, map, the reads that are supposed to map over the fake breakpoint do not map correctly. So variants located around these regions are not called correctly. To address that issue, um, they developed a shifted reference genome where the fake breakpoint is located on the other side, which allowed to call the variants correctly in this region. Then the variants are lifted over, uh, the information is merged into uh, several VCF. I will de uh, detail the steps at the bottom uh, later. The third sub workflow is the single nucleotide variant sub workflow. It is the most straightforward one. For variant calling, we decided to use deep variant, and we are uh, using GL Nexus for the joint calling. For the first sub workflow, which is the structural variant sub workflow, it was mostly developed by Mohamed Abdallah, a postdoc within the Wasserman lab. It was decided to use Smooth and Menta for structural variant colors. Jasmine is used to merge the variants, and Paragraph is used to uh, genotype the structural variants uh, within the individual data. Then uh, the information is merged with BCF tools. For the short tenem repeats, we are using Expansion Hunter, and for the mobile element insertions, we are using Melt. And so all the variant calling part is, is very similar to other um, pipelines such as NF core rare disease or NF core SAREC. What is really specific about um, this data, this pipeline, is um, the steps at the bottom here. It's the um, sample quality control, variant quality control, all of frequency calculation, and also sex imputation. The reason for that is the quality control is performed differently if you have just one individual or a trio versus if you have a population. So all of this is performed within AL, which is a Python-based analysis tool that is also used by uh, Nomad and some other variant catalog pipelines. Um, so, as I said, it performed uh, some quality control as well as the variant frequency calculation. 
and then the information, the variants are annotated using the EP. So that was just an overview of the pipeline. This is the actual complete pipeline. Uh, it's available on the Westerman Lab GitHub and it's described in more detail in this preprint. It was tested on 100 samples and it works. The details of the number of CPU hours as well as the number of samples as variants that were filtered out by uh, the quality control steps is available within the preprint. However, these versions still rely on locally installed software. And that is an issue for two, reason, two reasons. First, it's really hard for other projects to use. And second, it's impossible to test very easily like we are used to test other NF core and XFlow pipeline with just one common line. <clears throat> Therefore, the future for the pipeline is to move it to an NF core uh, level pipeline. Uh, my goal is to move the mapping as well as the single nucleotide variants of workflow during uh, next month hackathon. So if anyone wants to uh, team up with me for the code or for coding review, please reach out. After that, we ha will have to move the mitochondrial and the substructural variants of workflow also to NF core. This will allow first other people to try it more easily, but it will also force us to do better documentation and that is very important to make sure that other groups can use the pipeline if the documentation is good then it's easier for other people to to try and use this pipeline to test the pipeline i actually needed to create a new data set um, because the one that were available within the nf core did not fit my needs so I needed paired and short read FASTQ files that included part of a notosome as well as chromosome X and Y, parts of chromosome X and Y to impute uh, sex for the individuals, as well as read mapping to the mitochondrial chromosomes to test subworkflow too. I also needed read supporting the presence of a structural variants to be able to test uh, the subworkflow for and several samples including XX and XY individuals to be able to test um, the variant frequency calculation part. So this will hopefully be available uh, to others soon in case you need them to test your tools or your pipeline. I will also include the um, reference genome for the same region and additional files such as the short tenem repeat catalog, uh, the mitochondrial reference file and the shifted one I mentioned before. In other future developments, um, I would like to include more, to test at least more reference genomes, including the T2T for humans, but also non-humans reference genomes. I would like to include more software, for example, uh, to give the, the opportunity for the user to decide which mapper they wanna use, um, which variant colors they wanna use. We also um, want to make sure that it, uh, it fits with the NF core rare disease pipeline. I know that they use slightly different colors for structural variants and would be interesting to make sure that there is a good fit. And it's also possible to include additional metrics such as uh, ancestry inference, mitochondrial haplogroup assignment or relatedness calculation. Those are metrics that are often associated to um, variant catalog pipeline it was out of the scope for the Silent Genomes project, but we understand the relevance for all the projects and it would be perfectly, it would be great to also include them and have them as an option. So um, I would like to acknowledge uh, everyone within the Wasserman lab, um, especially Wyeth Wasserman, the team leader, um, Mohamed Abdallah, who worked a lot on the structural variant pipeline, sub-workflow, and, and the rest of the pipeline, as, a, as well as Brittany Hewitson, the Silent Genomes team, and also all the NF Core community. It's been a very welcoming community, and I've learned a lot. Uh, obviously, this is not live. Uh, if you have any question, please reach out on the NF Core variant catalog channel to spark up discussion and start threads on, on different things. If uh, you prefer to reach out directly to me, you can do it through uh, Twitter or GitHub. Thank you for your attention and have a great, great rest of your day.